Hello there, right here. We have a brand new 1.16 snapshot. This is 20W20A, and we are getting very close to having some pre releases come out for 1.16, and then we'll have the full release. I would say it's probably going to come here towards the end of May. Today, guys, we're going to be doing a snapshot review of this new version, which comes out with changes to game mode switching, like this as well as new advancements, which you can obtain in another dimension. And guys, remember right after this video goes live, we're going to be opening up a testing world with the viewers for our snapshot testing stream. You can find all the information down below on my Twitch channel. So make sure to hop on over there after the stream and join us in the testing world. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new updates coming to Minecraft. Let's get into all the new changes. The first new feature in this snapshot is a game mode switcher. So if we do F3 plus Q, you'll get access to all the different F3 shortcuts. And here is a new one way down here. F3 plus 4, open game mode switcher. So let's go ahead and do that. F3 plus 4, you can see something popped up. So you got to hold it, F3 plus 4. And if you, as long as you hold on F3, the menu is up. Then you can press F4 again to move it. You see these are the different game modes. That you can switch to so there's creative mode which is indicated by the grass block we got survival mode indicated by the sword we got adventure mode which is indicated by a empty map and last we got spectator mode which is indicated by a eye of ender then if i release f3 it will actually use the one that i am over top of so release f3 and now we are in creative mode now if i just hit f3 plus 4 really quickly it's going to jump back to the previous one so let's go ahead and switch it to a different one let's say we are let's go into creative and then let's say we want to go into survival so if we do f3 plus 4 and we go over to survival we're now in survival but now it will remember what we were in last so if i just press f3 4 really quick now i'm in creative survival so it remembers the two last ones you switched between so you can also use a mouse so if i hold f3 then tap f4 this comes up and then I can use my, and then you can move your mouse over top of other ones. So I can just like click on this one or I click on this one. Now when I release F3 again, it will go into that mode. This is really good for people that do a lot of switching. Like I do tons of switching between game modes because I'm testing all sorts of different things. Sometimes I want to be in spectator so I can kind of see stuff from a really good advantage point. Uh, sometimes I want to be in Kratos so I can continue to like work on something that I'm building. It's Sometimes I want to go into survival mode so I can actually test it to see how it would interact with the player if he was in that mode. But with it, they also made a change to the F3N toggle for spectator. So before it would take you from like survival mode, if you press F3 plus N, it would take you into creative mode. And then you press it again, then it would take you into spectator mode. But now you can see I could go from survival mode straight into spectator mode just with the press of those buttons. And F3 plus N used to also take you from spectator mode right into creative mode. And you can never get back into survival mode. So can this be used with the new F3 plus F4 feature? So let's go ahead and try it. So I got, so I got the game mode switcher set to from creative to survival. So at any point, if I press F3 plus N, it's going to go straight into a uh, spectator. And then if I do F3 plus four, it's going to take me back to the last mode, which was survival. Now if I press F3 plus 4, it's going to take it back into Spectator instead of it being creative. Kind of confusing because they kind of both work on each other. So let's say if I want to go back into survival mode like it was before. Um, yeah, I can't easily do that with any of these buttons. Let's say I want to go into creative mode like it was before. Um, doesn't matter which button I use. Yeah, none of them get me into creative mode. So I feel like they should kind of isolate the two. So let's say you're working something in survival and then you want to go into creative. You got your game mode switcher set it so you can just do that and now you're in creative. Uh, then you go into spectator, you kind of observe some stuff, you come back into creative and let's say okay I want to go back into survival right. So I'll just do my F3 plus 4 game mode switcher to get back into survival. Uh, that is not the case. So it actually remembers that you went into spectator. So they kind of have like two systems that are kind of redundant. And they're overlapping each other and they kind of interfere with each other. So this actually doesn't make um, testing any easier for me at least. I move my F3 plus N button onto my mouse so I can do this very easily. But with these new buttons you really can't easily have the thing to remember that you were in survival mode a little while ago. You'd have to reset up this thing for survival mode and it works fine if you you know do this. But as soon as you touch your F3 plus N you go into Spectre, come back. I'll go back to survival. Nope. So I feel like the, the spectator mode switching should be kind of independent. So as if you're like going into kind of spectator, kind of spectate something, 
and then you come back in creative it shouldn't interfere with the game mode switcher because right now they both interfere with each other which is really annoying so what i want to like switch into survival mode i actually have a button that types out uh the game mode for me so i go into survival mode and then let's say i want to go into creative mode i normally would just press f3 plus n because that was the old way to do it but now it directly takes me into spectator then takes me back into survival which is very useful, but I don't feel like the, the game mode switcher should interfere with the, the toggling of spectator mode. And then for like older versions, I actually have a button that also takes me into uh, creative mode. So I really hope they take this into consideration and maybe tweak it a little bit so that the two features are kind of independent rather than being redundant. That might have been a little bit confusing, but just something that I use quite often. So I think giving adequate feedback on that topic is necessary. So the next big change that they did is new advancement, new nether advancement. Here we see we are in the nether dimension, so it automatically pulls up to the nether advancements. And holy moly, look at all these ones here. The first new advancement is right here. This is hidden in the depths, obtain ancient debris. This is pretty straightforward, uh, just by finding some ancient debris here in the nether dimension and mining it up, will you actually get that advancement? Very cool advancement for progression in the new nether update. And I know Slice Lime during his live streams, he's been working on new advancements for all across Minecraft for his own data pack. One advancement he added into his data pack was one for collecting ancient debris. And I believe he also had a similar name for his, something about hidden in the depths. Even though you can almost find ancient debris from the bottom of the world all the way to the top of the world. The next new one is Country Load Take Me Home, which is <laughs> reference to Country Road Take Me Home. So lodestones, obviously allow you to find your way home so it says use a compass on the lodestone so you have a way to get back home also notice the shape of the actual advancement like these ones that are squarish these are like the easy ones uh the ones that are like kind of rounded like this one are the little harder ones and then the ones that are kind of like star shape pointy are like the really high advancements so also part of the hidden depth one we also have a hard one which is which is cover me in debris get a full suit of nether ray armor that's quite high advancement so I think it's kind of a play on words for the diamond one, which is cover me in diamonds. Very tough one to get, very cool. There's a new advancement here, which is those were the days entering a bastion remnant as they are in runes. So they're kind of like back in the day. There's one that comes off of that one, which is war pigs. Loot a chest in a bastion remnant. As after war, there's a lot of plunder. So you're like coming through old chests collecting plunder. If we go down here, we also got a new one, which is who is cutting onions? Tain crying obsidian. As Obsidian is crying, it's a reference to onions making you cry. There's one that comes off of that one, which is not quite nine lives. Charge a respawn anchor to the maximum. Because respawn anchors have four uses, so it's not quite nine lives to constantly be respawned back there after you set your spawn. Cool advancements to kind of teach people all different parts about the nether. We got some more down here. We also got O oh Shiny, distract a pinglin with gold. As when the piglins are mad at you, you can just drop gold and then they will get distracted and try picking it up and checking it out before coming after you again. Down here at the very, very bottom, we have we have this boat has legs, which is ride a strider with a warped fungus stick. Kind of teaches people to make fungus sticks and to ride striders about. And part of that one is explore all nether biomes. So just like there's an overworld one to do with biomes, there's also another one. There's only five biomes here. The warp forest, the crimson forest, the soul sand valley, the normal nether waste, and then the deltas. And you don't have to be on a strider to get these advancements. So a lot of cool nether based advancements, plus the old ones here as well. You can see them here. I went ahead and opened them all up so you can even see the high tier ones, which are way over here. They also made some changes to other advancements while they were doing this. The change of bullseye one, so you can't just stand really close to it and shoot it to get a bullseye. Now it says hit the bullseye of a target block from at least 30 meters away or 30 blocks away. That is uh, much, much more difficult, especially with the little bit of randomness that arrows have. You can also see that is a high end advancement, which now makes sense because you can't just easily cheat it. They also changed the serious dedication. Use a netherite ingot to upgrade a hoe and then reevaluate your life choices. So before this advancement would be obtained, if you took a diamond hoe and you used so many uses on it that it broke. But now you get the advancement just for upgrading a hoe to a netherite hoe, which is probably not seen as a very good thing to do, especially since you get netherite hoes from bartering with piglins and quite different from the previous one. Now they also changed the stone age advancement as mine stone with your new pickaxe. This also now can work with the black stone that was added recently. You can go into another dimension, mine some of that up, and you'll get the advancement. You don't have to have to mine in the overworld. 
They also change the parrots and the bats advancement for breeding two animals. You can also get this advancement for breeding a, a pair of striders. They also do some technical changes. So if you summon a strider with no AI, you can still summon it with rotation. They also added a thrown item picked up by entity advancement trigger. They have another one called player generates container loot. They also have item used on block trigger and they have removed the safely harvested honey advancement. Now they didn't actually remove the advancement, they removed the trigger for the advancement. It was probably unnecessary, so they just cleaned it up. So for the item used on block trigger of the item, it matches the thrown item which was picked up, which matches the entity which picked up the item. So I could just see if the item that was thrown out was picked up by the same person. For the player generates container loot trigger, it has a property of loot table which matches the resource location of the generated loot table. So it says what kind of loot that they go in and look for. So if this was in a bastion, it would say that this was a bastion loot table. The item used on block trigger has to do with lodestone. So it has a trigger which has the property of location, which matches location at which the center of the block the item has been used on. So the center of this block, as well as item, which matches the item used on that block, which is a compass. And this is used for keeping track with advancements. Now with advancements change to collecting honey, they have some miscellaneous trigger changes. Uh, one is location. So they got a new property, which is smoky which checks if the location is closely above a campfire. They also have entity properties. They got new properties of vehicle and targeted entity, which matches the vehicle or the entity targeted by a mob. That mostly has to do with the new strider advancement. They also did a couple bug fixes in this new snapshot as well. They changed the not today thank you, deflecting a projectile with a shield. There was a problem with it being triggered with non-arrow projectiles. Same thing goes for the bullseye target. What they did is they changed the wording so it doesn't have to say anything about using arrows on it because you can use any projectile to get this advancement as long as they're accurate. Ice bucket challenge advancement was being obtained just by collecting obsidian from piglins that were bartered with. Essentially picking up obsidian would give you this advancement. So they tweaked it so you actually have to now mine it up. They also fixed that problem that we talked about earlier to do with striders not being included in the breeding advancement. They also came around and fixed a pretty annoying bug to do with structure blocks. Uh, we use them quite often to save structures and new snapshots because their worlds are always updating so it's really easy to move structures around like this. And even though they made some changes so that they can be bigger than 32 by 32 now, one is 32 by 32 by 32. Now they could go up to 48 by 48 by 48. But the problem is if your block was offset by a little bit, like this block of mine was offset by one, I can make these digits go past 32. But when it came to the height, it would never allow me to go past 32. So now they fixed that. So even if I have an offset, if I hit done, it should keep that number in there instead of removing it like it did last time. So now you can see it is much, much higher. So that was awesome. It was really cool to use uh, structure blocks. I don't know why they went from like 32 to 48. Not really that much of a difference. They should really just allow players to tweak the number as high as they want and maybe give them some kind of warning about what are some consequences if you do this. That's really awesome to see that they fixed that bug. Little annoying things like that. I really hate the problem with structure blocks. You have a structure block that not necessarily is uh, a very square shape. So you have something like this. And if I would go ahead and save this as test. Now let's go ahead and actually try to paste this in. So let's say I want to put up here and paste it in. That's what it's gonna look like. Uh, let's say I want to rotate it 90 degrees like that. And then I also want to load it in like that. Works just fine. But what if I actually want to grab this new kind of shape here? Maybe I wanna grab this shape here and I want to save it. So let's save it as something else. Save it as one. Go ahead and put it over here. So if I paste this in, you would think it looked just like this with a little teeny slit kind of chopped up. That's what you think at least. Let's go ahead and load it. I guess we'll just overrid it. So it should just be called test. And yeah, if you press load, you see nothing appears. Okay, I gave in proof it. <laughs> I go over here, I click save. I go over here. Click load. Nothing pops up. So yeah, there is a real problem with that. Super annoying. What it's doing is it's actually taking this structure and turning it back to the original way it was pointing and they try and save everything that's over here. It's like, wait, why, why are you trying to save stuff over here? The, the little lines are indicating that you're trying to save this. And that's why most people don't even bother using structure blocks. They're just so riddled with bugs. And people prefer stuff like world edit, but it doesn't have to be a way if they would make them very user-friendly. 
They also fixed a bug that recently came up to do with players trying to throw ender pearls to get out of different entity mounts. So if I just summon in a boat, uh, you guys probably know this. If you like ride a boat and you throw an ender pearl, you can get out of it. And that was removed recently. So they went ahead and fixed it. It looks a little bit jittery. You know, it's on my screen, like kind of double jittered. So I don't know if that's intended. I never, I've never seen that before when doing this. But it is quite useful because some cases you can't really like exit something without like dying. Um, especially like people like riding striders and they want to leave their strider. Let's say they get kind of stuck out here in the open. They want to leave their strider. They can like throw an pearl to hop off of it and get to a safe location on the ground. All in all, a pretty interesting snapshot to do with kind of more of a quality of life feature of switching game modes, especially for people that do a lot of testing. Also with the whole like nether advancement increase, you can see there's a lot more nether advancements, which is pretty awesome. Kind of encourage people to try new things in the nether. And I hope the developers take in consideration in tweaking the new F3 buttons. And you can tell that they are getting closer to doing the full release of 1.16, so look forward to that as well as of course the pre-releases, which normally come out before the full release. This is a great time to go ahead and report any bugs you guys notice with the new changes as well as just bugs in general in Minecraft. If you guys do know of any really major ones, uh, let me know down in the comments as well as check out the bug report page to see if it's already been reported. I'll probably be doing a video going over a bunch of really annoying ones that I come across quite often. And maybe I'll include some of your guys's. And if you guys aren't aware of all the changes to 1.16, make sure to check out the playlist down below, which goes into all the 1.16 snapshots and the new stuff that they bring to the game. Also, if you're looking for new farms for 1.16, you can find a playlist down in the description. And don't forget to go ahead and share this video with other Minecrafters so they can learn about the new changes for 1.16, as well as leave a like on the video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.